President Trump has faced harsh criticism from Democratic lawmakers and presidential candidates for using the word hoax in connection to the coronavirus. But here's what he actually had to say. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? Coronavirus. They're politicizing it. We did one of the great jobs, you say, House President Trump doing. They go, oh, not good, not good. <laughs> they have no clue. They don't have any clue. They can't even count their votes in Iowa. They tried the impeachment hoax. That was on a perfect conversation. They tried anything. They tried it over and over. They've been doing it since you got in. It's all turning. They lost. It's all turning. Think of it. Think of it. And this is their new hoax. And President Trump clarified what he meant when he used the word hoax during a White House press briefing the next day after the death of the first American from the coronavirus. Take a listen to this. Hoax referring to uh, the action that they take to try and pin this on somebody because we've done such a good job. Uh, the hoax is on them. Not, I'm not talking about what's happening here. I'm talking what they're doing. That's the hoax. That's just a continuation of the hoax, whether it's uh, the impeachment hoax or the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. This is what I'm talking about. But even after the president explained his remarks, the left-leaning media and some Democratic politicians continued to wrongly accuse him of calling the coronavirus a hoax. I find it incomprehensible that the president would do something as inane as calling it a hoax, which he did last night in South Carolina. I was particularly disturbed to hear the word hoax used by the president recently in talking about this issue. If you have the president telling people it's a hoax, that there's nothing to worry about, that it will disappear, as he said yesterday, it's, it, and it'll be a miracle. Now, it's not just politicians. It's also the media misrepresenting what the president said. Just take a look at this headline from Politico. It says, quote, Trump rallies his base to treat coronavirus as a hoax. Now, here to talk about this is retired Army Lieutenant Colonel and Vice President of Heritage's Institutes for National Security and Foreign Policy, Jim Carafano. Jim, welcome. Good to be with you. Okay, so it's amazing to me how the president in context was pretty clear when you listen yeah. to it. He's saying, okay, these are all the hoaxes that they're having, and now they're trying to blame this because people had said from the outset it's the Trump virus and Trump's to blame, and so he's kind of making this, right. you know, in a sense. But the media ran with that to try to make it look like he was calling the virus a hoax, despite the fact that he'd put all these travel bans in place, et cetera, et cetera, and then they wouldn't let it go. Is that, I mean, it seems so odd that there is such a desperation to get him. Right. So let me look, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm at a nonpartisan foundation. I don't even do politics, but let me come at not even looking at the, the politics, but as a, you know, as a career, as a historian and, and looking at presidential leadership. So first of all, this is just the new Stormy Daniels. This is a consistent pattern of behavior since he won the election, which is this will take him down. And you've watched them just jump from thing to thing to thing. They just can't help it. You know who else experiences? Eisenhower. Eisenhower was actually a great president, but he had kind of this grandpa style when he was president. And, and, and they just kept, because he, he didn't go to the right cocktail parties. He wasn't one of them. He wasn't a new dealer. So they just find a, the next thing was going to take them down and take away their legitimacy. It hasn't worked. So the, the re most recent example is this was the testing. He had to get tested. Tex testing became the new tax returns, right? And then, of course, the day he took the test, the issue disappeared, right. and now they're on to something else. And, and here's the real thing. If you really want to judge a president, you look at rhetoric and action. It's just not what they say. It's also what they do. If FDR had said, given a great Pearl Harbor speech, but then we didn't actually fight back, nobody would remember that speech. Obama gave this wonderful speech in Cairo, terrific speech. Nobody remembers a word of it because he didn't do anything afterwards. So if you want to really fairly judge a president, and journalists and critics should know this, look at what they say and what they do and put them together. And then you have an understanding of their leadership. Okay. I want to get your take on this um, as a former military guy. We talked to um, Congressman Waltz earlier about it, but a lot of people, even Joe Biden saying that we should utilize the military right now to help with the coronavirus. Do you think that that's appropriate? Do you think that's what we should be doing, a good use of our military? So 25 years in the military, including working a lot with the National Guard and spending, a, sure. There's lots of places where calling out the National Guard makes perfect sense, but not for the thing people think. 
the vision they have in their head is a guy with a gas mask and a, and a, and a machine gun with a bayonet on it, right? You know, that's not what the military does in situations like this. Mostly what they do is provide logistical support. So, for example, if you're not doing Meals on Wheels, then you might bring in the local National Guard, which is a perfect thing because they know the community to help deliver food to, old, you know, to senior citizen homes. Um, even the medical, th there's some medical surge capacity in the military, not near as much as people think. Um, there, there is a surge capacity. It's mostly controlled by HA, the Health and Human Services. You, you can bring in doctors. You, you've got medical access. But, but um, the military doesn't provide a lot of medical surge capacity. It's not something they actually have hanging around. Let me ask you a quick question. In dealing with this, there is, to some degree, I think we've forgotten how it started. Or maybe I'm off base on this. Have we sort of forgotten China's role in this because we're starting to deal with it so much? We've got to figure out how to treat people. Have we forgotten what China's role is? Or is not? I mean, you tell me. No, and the most clear example of that is when you saw people complaining about the travel ban against Europe. Because people have to understand where that came from. The, the number one thing that this president did which was the, the most strategic and the most important and pow powerful was to prevent the disease from getting here as long as possible. And the reason for that is we hope it's a normal flu season and it, go and it goes over the normal flu season. The longer it prevents getting here, the less time it has to spread. So we don't know that, but, but we hope that. And so the longer you delay it getting here, the better off you are. So he delayed it from China, but who didn't delay it from China? Well, and there were two important actors. One was Iran where Iran basically imported the virus from China. Bad for them. Luckily, nobody comes here from Iran. But the, another one was Italy, because there's a large migrant Chinese population or in Italy that does you know, um, garment work and stuff like that. Um, they all went home for Chinese New Year's. They all came back before China shut the travel down. Um, basically, the second oldest population in the world imported it. And then because you're in a Schengen zone, right, which means yeah. those countries don't have you flooded Europe. So blocking essentially the second wave of importing the Chinese like this. And the analogy I make is really is you can't drain the bathtub if you don't turn the faucet off. So stopping new sources of right. infection while we stop the spreading here is really important. Very helpful. Thank you very much, Jim. Thanks I appreciate it.